Ladies and gentlemen, John Fergala. Thank you for having me today. Uh, so today, I'm going to go through a couple things on uh, the topic today. So first, I want to discuss the benchmark setup that I put together to just to compare the clients of uh, actually four clients that I actually compared. Talk about the IOR parameters that I used and the settings. Luster client methodology and tuning that we went through. And then I'm going to go through two different comparisons of the client performance. One is solely just comparing single thread performance. And then the other comparison is really looking at the throughput com comparison of maximizing storage performance. And then formalize it and share all the data results, and then come up with some summary remarks that I found quite interesting looking at the comparisons. So the storage architecture was based on a Xyrotex cluster store 6000 scalable storage unit with grid rate OSTs. So the rated storage performance for this architecture is approximately six gigabytes per second read or write using IOR. So that was the goal for the throughput test is to get six gigabytes per second read or write across all client uh, versions that I used. The client hardware uh, it was very modest, eight clients. Each client was configured with QDR InfiniBand, 48 gigs of memory, 12 cores, and I used Scientific Linux 6.5 and the clients with stock OFAD. So let's talk about the IOR parameters I used. So I used MPI run to execute IOR across all eight clients, and I used the by slot distribution. So at a minimum, I started with four slots per client or four tasks per client and scaled up the number of slots per client by distribution of four, and then by that, when we ran out four tasks, then I added four additional tasks per client. Uh, the parameters that I use are file per process. I standardize on direct I.O. Uh, instead of buffered I.O. And I use a transfer size of 64 megabyte because the grid OSTs are trying to maximize performance. And then I use really large block size per task because I wanted to use the Stonewall option to read and write. So I was writing for four minutes, then read for two minutes. The luster settings that I would use for the output of the data was a stripe count of one and a stripe size of one megabyte. So the four client versions I compared was 189, 216, 243, and 251. And the methodology was that we enabled and disabled checksums and in each time that we enabled the disabled checksums, we ran through the same iterations of the client tuning parameters of the max RPCs in flight and the max dirty MBs. And you can see that I, I kept with the one to four ratio of max RPCs in flight and max dirty MBs. So we started with 32 max RPCs in flight and 128, so on and so forth. In each of these iterations, we had checksums disabled and checksums enabled. As I go through the presentation, you're going to see graphs of all data results of checksums disabled, and you see a tabular results of the impact of when checksums were enabled. So let's focus on the single thread performance first. So this is using one task on a client comparing reads and writes. So this table is with checksums disabled with, uh, with only looking at a write performance. So you see here the top line in black is our 1.89 right single thread performance. The red line at the bottom was the 2.16, and the kind of the overlapping line in green and blue were 2.43 and 2.51. So what this key takeaway is, is that 1.89 single thread performance still is far better than the client versions that I benchmark. But the positive takeaway is 2.43 and 2.51 vastly was improved in performance compared to the 2.16 client code. You take the same results and you look at read performance with checksums disabled. And again, 1.89 is at the very top and the very bottom is 2.1.6. And very similarly, 2.43, 2.51 follow the exact same performance curves. So regardless of the RPCs in flight, because there's only a single thread, these are pretty much the uh, performance of a single thread performance when looking at these client versions. And again, the positive takeaway is 243 and 251 vastly improved against this former predecessor of 2.1.6. Now, what I also did was I wanted to isolate single thread performance. So I looked at list now enabled checksums on just single thread performance numbers. So when we enable checksums, 
you'll see that the performance impact on all four client versions were the biggest on 189. So on reads, it was up to 19%. On writes, it was up to 35%. Uh, Interesting data, though, as we went to the 2.x client code, the checksums impact on those single thread performance was much less, which was very encouraging to see. You'll see as uh, 243 and 251 almost had the same performance impact of 6% less performance impact on reads and about a 1% performance impact on writes, which was very encouraging to see that. Historically, I've always thought checksums impact was much larger than that, but with the 2x client code, it's much smaller than that. So looking at that, so the next couple of slides now is not looking at now single thread performance, now looking at how to maximize storage throughput. And the key goal was how do we get six gigabytes per second read and write using all four client versions. So we're going to start with 189 and have it compared to itself and then talk to all the four client versions and then overlap the relevant client versions to maximize performance. So let's start with 189. So 189, we started with the max RPCs in flight with 32 and 128 and incremented by a 4x version on top of that. So we started with one node with four tasks, increased that up to eight nodes, four tasks per node or 32 threads total, and then added up more threads. So you added up to eight nodes, 64 threads, and then eight nodes, 96 threads, because we have 12 cores and I wanted to isolate a thread per core. You can see with 189, with the more threads that we added, the performance all across max RPCs in flight and max 30 MP had no impact difference between all different um, thread counts. So relatively, we were able to hit the storage throughput that was required at a minimum of 60 gigabytes per second using 189 client code. And the different settings in max RPCs and max 30 MBs had really no impact on the performance for reads and writes. Now 2.1.6 regardless of what I tried to do to get the performance impact up on 2.16, the highest read performance I could get was just roughly over five gigabytes per second. And the highest write performance was right around four gigabytes per second, maybe just a tad, a tad north of that. But you can see that with, uh, with the more threads, you can see the performance increasing. But then you could also see that in general, the different client settings really didn't have an impact on trying to maximize the storage throughput. So with the eight clients, we saw at, at most four gigabytes per second writes, nowhere near what the storage architecture was able to push. So now let's go to 243. So 243 is where this was actually very interesting. The different client settings and the different threads actually had an impact in storage throughput. So you can start seeing with the, the color scheme here, that with the larger max RPCs in flight, uh, around 128 or 256, we're able to maximize reads and write performance uh, almost equivalently to 189 client code. So with the smaller RPCs in flight, like 32 or 64, we could not get over to the maximum throughput of that storage architecture, 60 gigabytes per second. As soon as we got over 128 max RPCs in flight, we're able to get that write performance up we were able to get their read performance up, but once we got to 256, both reads and writes for 2.4.3 maximized storage throughput. What interesting data on this curve for the writes is that the sweet spot was about eight clients and 32 threads. What I found interesting was with the green curve at the 128 max RPCs in flight, actually did a diminishing returns of performance when we actually went to 64 threads, and then even worse around 96 threads. The 256 RPCs in flight held quite well between 32 threads and 64 threads, but then tapered off when we got to 96 threads. The reads, however, kind of standardized about the same, right around uh, 60 gigabytes per second, hovered around that with the 256 and 128 max RPCs in flight. Now take note of this curve, and let's look at 251. 251 almost followed the same curve on reads, the little bit difference on performance was the slight improvement on the max RPCs in flight for 256. So this is 243, and we're looking at the blue curve on the top left chart. And then you can see that there's almost parallel performance, or no performance degradation when going from 32 threads to 64 threads. So slight performance improvement 
On the right, it's looking at the 256 max RPCs in flight. Now, looking at the overall storage throughput, meaning that we standardized from four threads to 96 threads, and we took an average of the data to look at the performance impact when checksums were enabled, and you can see very different results when looking at throughput results versus single thread performance results. On the 189, you see that the checksum impact is negligible to about 2% for reads or writes. With a 2.16, it was a little higher, around 22% uh, with the 32 max RPCs in flight, but it actually got favorable in some, re in some results, on the right specifically, no more than 10%. Very encouraging on the 243 and 251 when checksums were disabled, the impact was within 5% on average, possibly 6%. So not as large of an impact to doing checksums enabled for 243 and 251. Clients. Now what I wanted to do, knowing that 2.1.6, I could not get the performance up, I then took 189, 243, and 251 and overlapped the results together for reads and writes. We could actually look at a really direct comparison. So this chart just looks at the three client versions and then you see some uh, dotted results. Those are the results I don't want you to focus on. Those are the ones that are 32 max RPCs in flight and 64 max RPCs in flight that we couldn't get the storage rated performance of six gigabytes per second, reads or writes, um, for those two clients. But what you can see here, the client of 189 scaled quite well and in standardized, it didn't degrade as much as we went to the top north of six gigabytes per second on writes. The, uh, when we increased the max RPCs in flight to 128, or 256, and again between 32 and 64 threads, 243 and 251 was almost performing equivalently to 189 clients. But then when we got to more threads, it tapered off a bit. Same thing with the read performance. I didn't want you to focus on the max RPCs in flight of 32 or 64, that's why they're a little lighter and dotted. I wanted you to focus on the max RPCs in flight of 128 and 256 for the 2.43 and 2.51 clients. You can see as well that they actually were able to sustain the storage rated performance for reads. Um, so the overall takeaway is that with the right client tuning parameters of 243 and 251, we can sustain the rated storage performance of six gigabytes per second. Um, with 189, regardless of the client tuning parameters, the biggest impact on performance with 189 was the number of threads we used. So, the direct comparison to maximize performance results was on 189, we looked at the far left table, which is I think gray in that scale or black. Those are the uh, max RPCs in flight of 32, max 30 MBs and 128. Those resulted, they gave us the maximum performance for the storage enclosure. On 2.16, these were the results that maximized the client performance when we looked at 2.16, and again, that was the lowest performing uh, require, uh, benchmark result that I had. And you looked at the blue and green, which is 2.43 and 2.51, with 256 max RPCs in flight, performance within range of the 189 clients, which is very encouraging where we were from the 2.16 client code. So interesting results from analyzing the raw data that we collected. Um, in general, 189 clients perform the same regardless of client settings. Encouraging news is 243 and 251. Well, not encouraging news. Surprising, actually, was I actually thought uh, the 2.51, before I ran these benchmarks, would have performed slightly better than 243. But you can see that, in general, the curves follow the same performance metrics when looking at client setting and number of threads increased. And then at a minimum for this benchmark setup, we needed to increase the max RPCs in flight to 256 to even get to the maximum storage throughput. And then the rule of thumb where we traditionally use max RPCs in flight is uh, one fourth the size of max 30 MBs or in inverse is max 30 MBs is 4X max RPCs in flight. With the later client versions, um, in my opinion, those rule of thumbs is not holding true anymore. We could actually see a max RPCs in flight of 256, and maybe your max dirty and bees equaled the same value of max RPCs in flight. Um, so those were interesting results as well. In summary, looking at all the raw data, 189 still provided the same, uh, highest performing 
single thread performance results. But encouraging, 243, 251 vastly improved over its predecessor, 2.1.6, for single thread performance. Uh, with the right client settings, 243, 251 can maximize the storage throughput. 2.16, regardless of any tuning parameters we could do, just underperformed. And the checksum's impact on the throughput test were not big, within 6% of the uh, checksums when they were disabled results. And um, again, 243, 251 almost performed similarly in these benchmarks that I um, tabulated for the performance curves for maximizing storage throughput. Thank you. Any time for questions? Hey, John. Uh, what was the setting that you used for your benchmarks? Uh, can you repeat that, Normal? No. What was the setting that you used? Did you use a Cray, or was it just a flat tree? It was a standard x86 clients on a flat InfiniBand network directly mounting a cluster storage 6000 scalable storage unit. OK. Uh, QDR, FDR? That was QDR on the clients, FDR on the storage, and FDR on the core switch. Okay, so on the testing we did, we didn't need to go up to 256 on the max RPCs in flight because we are oversubscribed on the Cray side. And again, I only had eight clients, so that also a, a plays a factor on the RPCs in flight. If I had more clients, the results could have been slightly different. The max RPCs in flight setting could be much less if I had more clients. Yeah, uh, that's what I wanted to point out. So we didn't have to, we got a better performance with 24 compared to 186 with just a max RPC in flights of 32. Good, thanks. Um, hi there. So this is a test of Lustre client performance. On your server end, was that always locked down as Lustre 2.51? No, that was locked down. I will revisit that. I actually probably missed stating that. Um, that was using a Xyrotex, uh, Luster 2.1 um, variant server-side code. That was static across the benchmarks. So this is 189, 243, 251, and 2.16 clients running against the Xyrotex variant 2.1 server version of Luster. I did not do any benchmarks on the server side other than the 2.1. OK, because I'm wondering if the server side does affect Right, the client side as well, if it's locked down. That is true, right. and um, we'll definitely revisit that when we, uh, when we move to that, newer client, to that new server side. Definitely look at the benchmarks and do the same performance comparisons. Yep. I think we have a question back there or up front. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I was wondering whether you made some test uh, regarding this uh, max uh, RPC in flight, uh, varying the, size, the average size of file. So because this measure are made with a given uh, average uh, size of the, of the file, or what? I mean, uh, whether, did, you, did you test something with, with the small file, like a few kilobytes? No, I did not. So I standardized. I wanted to keep almost everything static versus just the client settings and the client code. So the IOR benchmark was static across all benchmark settings. So I used a transfer size of 64 megabyte, and I used a block size big enough so I could write for four minutes and then read back that same result for two minutes and using direct IO. Thank you. Because the goal for me was just to maximize client performance and not look at various performance variation of small file versus large file, random versus sequential. I wanted to keep very, uh, almost everything static and just look at the client settings as the variable that changes. John? Yes. So I, I think you just answered my question as well, which is why didn't you look at shared file performance? Timing. <laughs> yeah. and, and that was on my things to do. Um, but I knew I only had 30 minutes, so I had to pick where I wanted to present the data. So single shared file is actually something that would be interesting to look at as well. And, and do you have any preliminary numbers that you could even talk about? I have preliminary numbers on a customer benchmark we did with 189 client code, but nowhere where we do the comparisons between the two. But that's something that would be on the task I would like to do and complete and probably 
you know, for the paper together, present another conference on. Okay. And maybe Brett, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I find, uh, yeah, a single share file with benchmarking is an art, so yeah. And, and, it, and right. it also depends on, you know, the, the number of clients, the number of OSTs, you know, all those things play a factor how you set up IOR for single share file. Uh, Brett Kettering's talk tomorrow from Landl, I think we'll have a little bit more about shared file. Good. Great. Uh, so I've got a question. Yes. Um, so in our environment, uh, you've got a poor sap that decides he's going to go to graduate school in chem informatics. And so he shows up and the director of the program says to him, you know, we've got this cluster and, you know, if you'd like to graduate, perhaps you should administer this cluster. So let's imagine now that it's got a Lustre file system attached to it. And this poor sap doesn't really even know where to begin. Uh, what can uh, you, Intel, anybody do uh, to make it so this guy doesn't have to read your paper, tweak everything, you know, figure out that his max uh, dirty megs has to yeah. be, you know, uh, RPCs in flight over four. So what what can be done? What do you think? So I know that in part of open as there's that working group for benchmarks, right? So um, what I try to do, and you know, and I haven't released this paper yet that I've written. I, I created a paper internally for our field team, so they could say when we rate a per storage performance, these are the tuning parameters and IOR setups. So we do baseline testing, make it very easy. Um, and that could be, and that's very specific to the cluster store architecture. Now, when you go to another architecture, it could be very different because they have harder rate caching or not. The number of size of the OSTs is different. The disk drive technology is different. So it, it's hard to say it's a standard, but I think what we could do in the working group, which I, I've been meaning to join the benchmark working group, is to look at a standard IOR test that just does baseline, and then a vendor could come in and say, specifically for us, these are the tweaks that we recommend. Um, or these are the characteristics of an architecture and these are the tweaks you look for to try to make it simple or simpler for somebody new that coming into Lustre. So I agree it's a challenge and, and we see things different every day that even a commercial code is going to perform differently than the synthetic benchmark. So um, the more, that, more exposure, the more data that we release, I think it's, it's going to be beneficial for the community as a whole. Okay, thanks, John. I mean, I look at the sign above your head, broadening the luster community, and I'm saying, well, you know, I mean, you just laid out a whole set of, of different parameters that need to be tweaked. You know, I mean, when you buy uh, an expensive sports car, uh, you know, do you really need to tweak all the pieces, yeah. parts, in order to get it to go? All right, thank you. No problem. Nope. Hi. Hi. Uh, do you have any information about the uh, variance that you got while uh, running this test and along that line? Uh, how many times did you run uh, each? The iterations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did one iteration for test. So I just created a script um, and I let it run overnight. And uh, so basically, we just let it run. And what I did was, you know, between each write and read, Every benchmark had different output files. So I didn't reuse the same output files. I had different names to make sure we were not trying to rewrite or reread or reuse the same file names. But I didn't do anything creative there. I didn't, I didn't clear Linux page caches on the clients. I didn't do anything between reads and writes. I, I wrote the data four minutes. I slept for five seconds. I read the data for two minutes, read the data, on to the next test. And then when we you know, went from different client versions, I unloaded Lustre modules, created and compiled a new client, mounted the file system, and reran the same scripts over and over again. So nothing unique, nothing creative, just very standard. Uh, hi, John. This is great work. Thanks. And uh, my question is that did you, by any chance, look at 2.42? No, I actually was going to look at it, but there was no reason to look at 2.43. I just saw the latest code stream available. I downloaded it, compiled it. Any idea that it would be the same as 2.43? I had some benchmarks at commercial customer sites running 2.42. Um, I didn't run IOR to baseline those tests because they were running commercial specific codes. It, it's hard to say without data um, if there was any improvements with 2.43, but it, it's worth something I could really compile and just run a synthetic benchmark. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Andres.
So according to that, they should be performing the same. Hey, John. Um, I just wanted to point out that uh, the reason why your benchmark results didn't change with 1.8 is because you were doing direct I.O., and direct yes. I.O. doesn't even take those tunables into account. I think you would see dramatic differences in buffered I.O. Yes. yes. And Good point. Um, then I just wanted to ask you a question about, uh, I think you answered it. You said you ran these scripts. You did the, the writes and then the reads back. You, so you read, you read back each new set of files from each set of scripts, right? You didn't have one set of files. No, that no, that's read. right. Okay. So every time I wrote, it was a new <coughs> file name and mm -hmm. a new set of test data created. And then that read for that test case would read back that same test file. The next test would uh, write a new set of files and read back that same set. It was never reading back the original file. Every test that we did when we increase the number of threads or increase the max RPCs in a flight or change checksums, always paired the two reads and writes together, but those pairs are very different in the reads, the file names. Yeah, thanks. I, was gonna, uh, I didn't see this in your data, but we've seen uh, read back uh, results change when you write down the data on, on the platters differently. So, okay. Yeah. And I saw that slightly too as well, because you know, the more that you write the data, what I did was, after I read it, I deleted, I had IOR delete those files. I didn't keep it on the file system. I was curious if you uh, looked at why the performance dropped at the end as you increased thread counts on the client. I looked at that result, so, um, you know, timing is everything. Um, I wanted to have more time looking at that, um, but I ran out of time, so I just decided to share the results, point out the uh, interesting data point, but that is something I want to look back and see why it, it tapered off like it did and where 189 did not. Thanks, Thank you.